So just in case you didn't know, Rhino 7 has been released earlier this month. Just as I said. Heh, I was right and you were wrong. So 1-0, my score. Anyway, um, so now that we can all happily join hands and start our renewed 90-day trial licenses, free trials, let's take a look at the default Rhino renderer and see if it has become actually you know, usable with the newest version. Um, so to start things off, Rhino uses cycles, right? So it's a cycles engine, cycles renderer. You know what else uses cycles? It's, it's Blender. Blender uses cycles as well. So the reasonable people of us would, would guess that Blender and Rhino uh, should have the same capabilities in rendering. Well, no, not, not really. Blender is much, much, much better in rendering than Rhino. So why is that? Well, it's, it's mostly due to uh, Rhino having a much more bare bones version of, of cycles, right? Even though the engine is the same, the functionality of it and possible materials are not. So, they have been improving the renderer for quite a bit, but uh, right now I still don't feel that it's uh, up to par with its competitors. But let's see, let's just take a, take a gander, take a closer look and see if it's actually good or not. And let's start with an object. So let me just drag and drop it in, open a file. Um, and let's just take a look at how this thing, I think it's a rocket, Let's see if it's a rocket. It's a laggy rocket. Uh, so let's see how this is going to actually render with cycles. Well, to do that, uh, first things first, I need to actually choose my current render to be Rhino Render, and it seems like it is. And notice how in Rhino 7, there's legacy Rhino Render and the new one, right? Rhino Render. So I'm going to use uh, the new one, of course, and I'll just switch uh, the view from shaded to, uh, let's, maybe we can immediately jump to ray traced just to see how it looks like. So that's, you know, it is what it is, right? It's not that bad and it's not that slow. So the hardware that I'm running is going to be in the video description, right? So you can just take a look at what kind of machine I'm testing this on. It's nothing spectacular. Um, but it is, it's, it does seem to be quite fast for a object-based render, at least compared to V-Ray. Um, object-based render with a single object in the scene. So let's make it heavier. Um, I will start by just going to rendered view rather than the ray traced view. And actually, I believe in the rendered view, I have changed a few things. Yeah, the background is changed to be solid color. So let me actually uh, revert all of my changes so that you can see, uh, restore defaults, there we go. So that you can see the same thing as, or rather I, I see the same thing as you would with the default um, settings right now. And yeah, clicking OK instead of cancel helps with actually saving those settings. So let's do that. Okay, so this is our rendered view. And what can we change, first of all, in uh, this, this cycles, new, new cycles version of rendering? Well, uh, let, let's start off by uh, messing around with the environment, right? What if I want um, ju just a black environment? Well, I can uh, type in environments here in the command line or and then kind of call, call that command here or I could go to render tools tab here and look for it should be like environments tab here yeah there we go this icon right here toggle environments panel Bam. same thing opens up environments panel. Yay. Here, uh, we can mess around with, with different environments. So this is the, the default one, the Rhino Studio environment. 
uh, but I can switch. So I can, for instance, create a new one. So let me just click on that plus sign and I can either say it's a basic environment or I will import it from a library. So let me just import it. Import an environment and here um, Rhino ships with a few preset environments. So let me just uh, use some sort of a, I don't know, Yokohama Knight maybe. Yeah, let's go for Yokohama Knight. I have no idea which one it is, but I, I'll, I'll just load it in. Sure, that one. And I believe if then if you right click on it, you can choose to set it as global environment, as a 360 degree backdrop environment and so on. So I will set it as a global environment so that it's it kind of appears in um, in my view. So it's going to appear in the rendered view as well as ray traced view. So there are two different things, rendered and ray traced. Ray traced actually calculates, actually renders. <laughs> it actually calculates the rays or traces the rays, right? While rendered view is just a preview of what you might expect to see in the ray traced version. By the way, this is uh, coming together slowly but surely. Uh, let me stop the ray traced view, jump back to rendered, and actually the backdrop here is obnoxious, so I want to get rid of it. Um, I will do that by... How do we do that? Well, maybe let's do it later. For now, I just want to add some material to this um, to this whole mesh, or, or this, this whole geometry. So let's add the material first, and then we will kind of calibrate everything and get rid of all of the unnecessary bits. All right, so adding a material. Well, you can either click on this uh, icon right here, which is uh, which says just toggle materials panel, or you can type in materials, uh, and it will pop up another window for you where you can click on this plus sign. And here you can just either import a material or add a material type, you know, and, and just work like build your material from there. Uh, the new material type that was added is physically based materials. Uh, which is PBR, uh, it's short for PBR, and PBR is very useful. Uh, the bad part about it is that in my tests, PBR is horrible for translucent materials and it's horrible for uh, metallic materials. So here, since I want this to be metallic, I will just use a regular metal type, material type. So we have metal, and let me just select all of these elements right click on, on my metal material, assign to objects. There we go, so we have our metal object here. Let me change the color of it to, do we just do black? Maybe not. Let's do something like that. There we go, hit okay. Um, polished maybe. Seems to be fine. Um, let me actually show you how it will look like with PBR. So let me create a new material, a physically based one, uh, metal PBR. Um, and yeah, it's its name, it's the type, physically based material. So I will keep the color, actually I'll make the color a little bit more gray so that it's similar to this color here. Can I? Yeah, I can copy the color, so I'll just copy and paste the color here so that these two colors are the same. I'll turn on metallic. Actually, it's pretty close. Okay, I take it back. It's not that far away. Um, for roughness, let's bump it down. Now it, it does actually look metallic. Okay, sorry, I, I take it back. It, it's actually fine. <laughs> um, what do we do? Well, let's, let's add now the metal PBR material to all of these. I don't know if it actually worked, so let me try and do this again, assign to all objects. Yeah, there we go, now it works. And let's just investigate, let's just take a look how it will look like in, in ray traced version. Not too shabby. I mean, it's not that bad. The reflections are there, definitely there, right? Okay. So that works. Uh, let us jump back to rendered view rather than ray traced view. And let's uh, 
mess around with the material a little bit more to see how um, how this whole thing works in um, in Rhino. So here, as a PBR material, we can add more layers on top of it. So when you click on detailed settings, oops, I accidentally added ambient inclusion, but basically when you click on detailed settings, you can add um, different layers. So for instance, you can add a sheen layer, which will create this kind of a... Oh, why, why does it just disappear? Either way, you can see it here in the in the render. It will create this kind of gradient, this kind of a Fresnel gradient. By the way, this is something that I really dislike. It's the the the, the preview of the material. This is super obnoxious. Either way, we don't need sheen, but what we do need is a bump map. So I will I will add a bump map layer, and I will say that under deal settings I will be using a bump map and I will assign a texture and I will use a texture of kitchen wood. I don't know. I, I just have it here available for me so I'll just choose that one. It's a normal map. Um, that's fine. This, this kind of a material reads a normal map. And it actually doesn't look that bad, right? Um, the tiling could be better. So I will, is there a way of how to change the tiling of the texture itself? Repetitions, there is. So I can just repeat the texture rather than using UVW mapping. That's good, that's nice to know. So this is how it looks like now. I think that's fine. Um, let's do three in one direction. So that's a little bit more streaky. All right. So you can indeed work with textures now separately from... I, I believe you could do that before as well. It's just the render itself is a little bit nicer. Um, let's see the retraced version. Yeah, starts looking like a thing, right? Okay, let's uh, jump back to rendered view. Uh, let's say our material is done, whatever. We, we still have many things to, to check. So I will be checking them. Um, first things first, I want to see what kind of lights do I have here in the scene. So I will click on this light bulb, or I can just type in lights. And here I can see that there is a skylight and there is a, a sunlight. And, and sunlight is turned on and skylight is turned off and uh, skylight was turned on. I will turn that off as well, just in case. Uh, ground plane, what does that do? Yeah, ground plane basically just adds a ground plane. We don't care about it here. So uh, other than that, we, we don't have any more lights. I want to add lights, but before I do that, I want to get rid of the background now. Or do we add the lights first? Let's add the lights first, sorry. Let's add the lights first. So I will be messing around with rectangular lights. It's also under render tools. There's this kind of point light, rectangular light, directional light, right? All of these uh, lights are here. There's also linear light, I don't know. I will just create a rectangular light, so these are basically just rectangles, and I can't see them. Why can't I see them? Because in rendered view, by default, lights are being not displayed, so you can't edit them in the rendered view. Great, super, wonderful job. Uh, anyway, under the, the display tab, you can always turn them on, and now you can um, edit them. So that means you can just rotate those lights and mess around with their positioning and whatnot and they will shine light, hopefully. But you can't really see in the preview because everything is... Um, how do you call it? Well, it, it's not, not displaying, right? There's no reflection of the light and no nothing. So real-time preview in terms of lights is completely useless. Uh, strike two. Um, let's go for... Let's actually jump to two different perspective, uh, two different views uh, instead of one. All right. So I'll, I'll I'll be using this one for rendering and this one for editing the lights. So here I will just change this to ray trace view, so that we actually can see what the hell is going on and where our light is. So light is not showing up in the in the reflection as well. Oh, wait, it is. 
it is showing up. The, the angle was incorrect. So it is showing up in the reflection, but it's not, not that great. Okay, let's see how we can mess around with this a little bit more. So this is the moment where I start uh, changing the render settings. So here under the right hand side, you see the render tab. If you don't see the render tab, you can always click on this uh, icon right here, which says toggle render settings, and then you will see the render tab. Uh, where you can mess around with resolution and quality, you can mess around with the backdrop and then yada yada, right? Um, so what I'm going to do is I will say that the backdrop should be a solid color. Hmm, but then it... Huh, that's... The, uh, so, so then we lose all of the reflections, that's fine. So for now, solid color and I'll just turn it completely black. Uh, and since all of the reflections are now also gone, it's only this single rectangular light that is shining on, on my whole shape. If I delete it, I don't know. If I delete it, it finds a light source from somewhere else. Yeah, it's just how it works, huh? So there are a lot of like, this is not a tutorial, right? So I'm not explaining everything that's happening. This is just me showing multiple ways of how you can get frustrated with, still can get frustrated with Rhino 7, um, 7's um, renderer, right? And the reason why you should still consider why you should still consider uh, Rhino, um, sorry, V-Ray for Rhino as your primary rendering engine if you want to stay in Rhino. Like for what it is, like for what it's worth, I have hidden all of the, this is a single light with a single material and a single object. And I have hidden all of the other, um, other light sources and, and whatnot. So this is the, the only thing that, that we see. And as it's rendering, this is not a bad, you know, not a bad render. Like the quality is nice, the gradients are fine, the reflections are fine. You can see that, uh, well, you can't <laughs> because I'm messing it up, uh, but you could see that it's actually kind of, uh, Calculate the correct reflections, but creating the materials, messing around with the environment, where is the environment, where the hell does it get the light from when there is no lights and so on, everything like that becomes super convoluted, super shitty, right? So it's not, it's not that, um, It's not that uh, this program uh, or, or this render is, is weak. By no means is it weak. It's just the user interface is, at least in my opinion, is completely unusable, right? It's frustrating to use. And this, is, this was just me creating a single material. Um, and don't even get me started on the preset materials in the Rhino library that you can use. Uh, those are complete garbage, honestly. Um, in terms of uh, actually rendering this out, so I haven't, uh, haven't finished talking about the settings and what you can do. This is kind of an overview. Um, in terms of um, actually kind of bringing back the reflections, I believe you can use custom environment for, for reflections. And here, when you tick mark this, you can choose the Yokohama Knight. Yeah, and then it's going to give you the environment. Can you change the, the reflections, though, the intensity of the reflections? I'm not sure about that. So it's an HDR image, that's good. And then there's the intensity here. Let's see what happens if we do five. Um, hello? Okay, and then apparently we need to hit okay. Will it recalculate? Okay, it does recalculate, but only when we hit OK, when we accept the changes. Uh, not, not that great. 
intensity one. Um, it's it's fine with the intensity, but it should automatically update when we actually rotate the HDR image. Again, one more thing that is completely un unusable. Like for, for my workflow, this wouldn't fly. Um, let's see the HDR though. And I know there's going to be quite a few people in the comments. And actually in the comments, I would like to hear if you are using Rhino's uh, cycles render for your projects or for, for your work. And if you are, uh, why? You know, maybe it's, maybe, maybe there's a good reason behind it, right? Uh, so, so correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, so here we can indeed edit the HDR image and let me just see uh, uh, what kind of settings can we change. There is the graph. Can we change the graph though? Values, can I increase it? No, I can't, but I can look at it. There's nothing that I can... Okay, there's, there's nothing I can do with that. Output adjustment though. Oh, okay, I can mess around with output adjustment. So I can change the saturation. I can increase the gamma. So here I'm just looking at the preview, the little preview there. So what if I increase the gamma or decrease the gamma to 0 0.8 darker, uh, 0 0.1? Yes, okay, so, so darker and also higher contrast. Um, and then gain 0 0.1, then it should be darker, right? Gain zero, I don't know. It's not reacting. Gamma one gain zero. It's a mystery. <laughs> Gain minus a uh, hundred. Okay, I can't do even a minus, so that that doesn't work properly. Um, let's see. Uh, gain five. Yeah. Okay. Gain one is maximum. Got it. Multiplier five then. So okay, it doesn't matter what I do. It's always going to give me the same thing. So I'll just hit okay. And let's hit OK again, because that's the only way it's going to update. OK, so the, it, it does work, right? It, it, it does update, and this, this whole thing now kind of re reflects the Yokohama port. Great. Uh, so so we, we know that that works. And now, since we know that, I will just dis disable it completely. Also, notice how much slower the rendering became, like the cycling to uh, passes became so much slower compared to the one without the custom environment, uh, without the reflection, sorry. Either way, let's uh, move on. There's the lighting where we can kind of change the, ooh, there's an amb ambient light uh, that we can kind of add. Doesn't work. Okay, cool. So it just straight up doesn't work. Um, that's nice. Anyway, let's not talk about that anymore. Um, dithering, the gamma adjustment, that's fine. Render channels, yeah, this is like, if, if Rhino didn't have these settings by now, I, I would just scream. Anyway, um, let's just see resolution and quality and let me just change the resolution to 1920 by 1080. That's that looks like a, a, a nice thumbnail. So I will probably use it for a thumbnail uh, once once it finishes rendering. And actually, while it's still rendering, let me increase the this this the la, la. rectangular light. Yes, that's that's the name of it. And actually, let me go to the properties of the rectangular light. By the way, the way you change the color and then so on of the light is by accessing its properties and changing the intensity. So let's change this up to like five so that it's more intense. Let's take a look at it now. 
Yeah. Okay. So, so that 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 looks fine. That that looks like a like a part of a spaceship, right? Okay. So we have that, and now oops, I automatically click on the uh, V-Ray's asset editor. No, no, no. We're not doing it with V-Ray. We're doing it with cycles. And here, let's just jump into. Uh, well, uh, resolution and quality, so 10, 1920 by 1080, DPI 92, and quality, let's go for good quality, right? I have no idea what that means, by the way, low quality, good quality. Let me just uh, check if it actually... So there is absolutely no indication for what, what good quality is. Well, let's just believe it. And basically, I will just click on the render button, the big render button here. And hopefully, this whole thing will not crash. So let's, let's pray. Let's pray together. OK, it didn't. So this is Rhino rendering my image. And it's doing a pretty decent job. Oh, my camera is in the way, but here you can see, ah, don't maximize. Here you can see that good quality is actually considered, considered to be 500 samples, which I don't think is, maybe it's necessary for this kind of a render, but 500 samples is quite a bit. Um, so it's going through the samples and let's see what else can we uh, can we investigate here? So there's, uh, as it's rendering, there are post effects that we can add. There are tone mapping effects and there are uh, final pass effects. So let's go through these and see what's, what's possible. So with post effects, I have NVIDIA Denoiser, by the way, um, a post effect called NVIDIA Denoiser. If you want one, you will need to, oh no, I need to pause. Okay, let me pause the rendering. And I can't close this, huh? That's nice. Mm. Okay, uh, I, I will actually close this. Uh, stop rendering, yes. And basically to have denoising software or denoising plugin for your cycles render in Rhino, you will need to install it separately. And to do that, it's actually pretty pretty convenient. And they did, uh, McNeil did a great job in, in doing that, uh, implementing that. It's uh, The command is called package manager, package manager. And here you can download any kind of um, plugin for Rhino. So there's AMD denoiser. If you have AMD um, graphics card, there's also, I believe, Intel denoiser, right? That, and you can basically just install these, right? You select, you click install, and it will ask you to restart, and you're good to go. So this is that's super. That's super nice. So let's jump back to ren actually rendering this, and uh, let's look at how denoiser will work. So I will not give it uh, 100 samples to render. Actually, I'll give it like 50, and then I will stop the render. Uh, let me just wait, 50, OK. OK, it's 52 samples, but you get the, the idea. So it's still pretty damn noisy, right? If I zoom in, I can see there's there's quite, quite a bit of noise uh, here and there, right? So if we turn on NVIDIA denoiser, it's either going to, oh my God, it's horrible. It's absolutely obnoxious and horrible. So, okay. Remember all of that detail that we had with the incon like uh, small bumps on the metal? Yeah, when you turn on and really noise it, those are gone. <laughs> it is just kind of muddy all, all over the place. I assume with more samples, it would be better, but it's, Yikes. Okay. So no NVIDIA denoiser for me. Uh, let me close that, <laughs> delete that plugin altogether, 
And let's actually start the render again. So I will just let it render more samples. And as it's doing that, let's go through actual post effects that we can uh, take a look at. Uh, so I will click on this add button. And let's see, there's curves. We can show surface edges and ISO curves, which uh, you might find, you know, might be nice. But apparently you can't change their color. But if I zoom in here, you can see the, the edges, right, of, of the surface appear here. Uh, so that's kind of nice if, if you need it, but you can't change their color. You can render curves And apparently you won't be able to um, change their color as well, so that's complete garbage. You can render points, you can render dimensions and text, so you can render all of the stuff that you usually don't render, that's great. Uh, you can add bloom, which I always like to do, well maybe not that intense, but here you can actually change the brightness and uh, intensity. So brightness threshold, I will change this to doesn't really react but yeah sure brightness threshold can i add a number please or do i just oh my god see what this this is doing i need to keep dragging it to the left to, to the right to increase this number and then if i drag it back it oh this user interface is obnoxious a anyway uh so this is too much that's kind of okay, maybe a little bit more, yeah? So with brightness threshold, you control how, how, how bright the thing needs to be to have a bloom effect on it. Radius is actually the radius of the bloom itself. Apparently when radius is zero, your image disappears, so that's great. This is turning to be a, uh, like a video of me bashing the, the, the render, but I mean, if it's complete garbage, it is complete garbage, right? At least this aspect of it. So here we can mess around with the, with the radius and here we can mess around with the intensity. So I just, I will just add a little bit of bloom. So this is with bloom, this is without bloom. With bloom, without bloom. Say it together. With bloom, without bloom. Okay, let's add more. Uh, so add glow. I don't know what that is. Glow is increase the radius, make the color red so that we actually see what's going on. Uh, doesn't work. Okay, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm doing something wrong. Maybe it can't be a pure color. So let's not do complete red. Let's do like light red. Still nothing. Um, Let's increase the intensity to a stupid amount. Still nothing. Let's increase the sensitivity or the... Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so you need to increase the sensitivity to make stuff glow. I still have no idea what's glowing, but my, uh, my reaction to this is ew, and I will just delete it. Bad, bad, bad thing, bad bad depth of field is actually pretty good uh, but it's it's pretty good in a way that it's fast so depth of field is blurring of things that are in front and uh, or in the back of the camera so you focus only on one thing with the camera and everything else gets blurred right depth perception um, so it's fast but it's the quality is complete garbage. And I don't think I can show you depth of field with this particular um, with this particular render. Well, you can already see how bad it is. Uh, let me just select focal distance to be right there. So I'm focusing on this one. So that means that here it's going to be blurred and blurring strength. This is the default value, by the way. This is how it blurs by default. Horrible. Um, let's do blurring strength of 20. Yeah, I mean, uh, sure, uh, for fast stuff, it's fine. But for uh, actual depth of field effect, this is uh, a 
comedy special. There's fog, there's a multiplier. What's a multiplier, by the way? Multiply, multiply the image by five, please. Oh, it's just contrast. Sure, um, that's nice. That's nice, uh, 1.2. I always like to add a little bit more of a, of a contrast. So this is without, this is with. Okay, let's do more, 1.5. With contrast, without contrast. With, without. Okay, that's, that's nice. This is something we can, we can use. Uh, tone mapping, uh, so, so these are all of the effects. I just went through them. Tone mapping, uh, you can clamp, you can choose a black and white point, and then you can drag. Wait, I don't remember how that works. Yeah, that's exactly how it works. So you remap what's black and what's white. You can do filmic uh, with low contrast. So I would suggest always using filmic with medium contrast. That usually gives a nicer effect than using a multiplier. So let me close the multiplier and that's how filmic looks. So it basically just brings back the whites uh, to, to lower values. A high contrast filmic, I believe will, yeah, it will darken the dark parts and brighten the bright parts. So you can see it from this um, bowl shape here. Low contrast is going to be um, the bright parts will not get a spike, so it's just going to be this kind of a mess. Instead, let's just use medium contrast. I think that's that looks nice. So that's all for tone mapping. Filmic is usually the, the way to go unless you're doing something not non-realistic. Final pass, you have gamma uh, correction. 2.2 is the default one, 1.0 1 is the not default one. <laughs> <laughs> so we do use 2.2 gamma. Dithering, I have, I do remember, long, long time ago. I believe dithering is just a noise effect that's being added to, like as a post-production post thing, but I can't see it, so I'll just hide it. Can we add more? We can add a watermark, we can change hue, saturation, and luminance, and we can change brightness and contrast. Duh. Um, yeah, so this is what you get from straight up uh, Rhino, uh, Rhino 7, in the cycles in Rhino 7. I could make a, like a separate video showing you uh, cycles in Blender and kind of showing you what, what, what's different. But the main thing is, the, the main thing that I wanted to uh, kind of touch upon, would you like to save the image? Yeah, sure. That's going to be our thumbnail, boys. Uh, desktop, and I'll just call it thumbnail. JPEG, sure. Save. Okay. Um, I don't know what that is. So that's our now it disappeared. Please come back. Rendered. Okay. So this is our render. Uh, not 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 render. Sorry, that's that's bad. It's 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 our huh. Our viewport, but for some reason now it's disappearing. Like the we, we can't see the the render anymore. Wonderful. Anyway, let's let's ignore that part where we can can't actually see the render, and let's do a few more tests, and then we will call it a day. With because I will lose my mind if I work with, with this any further. I'll turn on the 360 environment of Yokohama Night. So this is how it looks like with all of the kind of adjustments and uh, changes that we made for it. I think it looks great. And let's do some material editing. And for this, I will actually use, I will create a new PBR material. Um, nom, 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 nom. And I want to use this option of create physically based material from texture files. 
this is interesting for me. So from texture files, it actually will ask me to give it a set of texture files. And I, I do have a set, so I want to see how it's going to react. Um, let's go to my resources, textures, and I will use rock cliffs texture here. So these four are albedo, displacement, normal, and roughness. It should have no, absolutely no problems understanding which is which because these are used in video games. These are from Quixel Megascans. So they are super high grade, super high quality materials. Let's hit open. Uh, texture assignment. Oh, okay. So it actually asks me to assign the texture. So albedo is base color, displacement is displacement, normal is bump map, roughness is roughness. Bonus points. Bonus points go to freaking Rhino. Material name, uh, rock. Rock, uh, texture mapping, uh, surface mapping, sure. We can even do box style mapping, that's nice. Uh, but I will be using surface mapping. Hit OK. Um, yeah, uh, that's one thing that I haven't mentioned. It's how reactive the interface is when you actually work with uh, more complex materials. Oh, even my webcam starts lagging. So this is how it looks like. Great, that, that looks beautiful. And let us just, uh, actually, let me just delete that rectangular piece right there. And instead of Yokohama Night, I will add a new environment. <clears throat> I'll, I'll import it from environment library. And I'll just say Rhino Sky. Sure, Rhino Sky. Like that. So this is Rhino Sky, right? Um, and I want some sort of a backdrop. So can we do a ground plane? Yes, we can. So I'll turn on the ground plane, ground plane settings. I will use a material for a ground plane and I will say that that material needs to be the rock texture. Let's see if that will just straight up crash our computer or not computer, our software. And it feels like it will. No, it doesn't. But the, uh, another question is, does it show the texture? No, <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. Of course not. Uh, because the ground plane is infinite and it's it, it will straight up not show the texture. So I'll just use metal material instead. That's fine. Um, I wasn't expecting much from the ground plane, the, the infinite plane on the ground. Either way. So, as you can see, the reflection is also incorrect, uh, which is fine. Let me just actually use plaster for the ground plane because that's um, show underside, use material, plaster. It's blue, of course. What, what else would you expect? <laughs> I don't know why it's blue. Don't 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 ask me why why it's blue. It's just blue. Okay, that that's fine. It is just blue. Uh, let me turn on the sunlight. So sun on. Ooh. Manual control. So this is where it starts getting getting weird, right? So we have that. Actually, uh, for ground plane settings, let me turn. Uh, let me turn off the the plaster. I will use shadow only here for the ground plane, and for the environment, I can't use Rhino Sky without, you know, with, without any kind of a not backdrop, but the bottom side of the 360 degree environment. So I'll use a different. Environment, and I'll just use uh, Studio Interior Sky, Rhino Studio, St. John's, New York City, sure, whatever. Let's use that. I have no idea which one it is, but oh, that's uh, 
That's an interior one, so nope. And I keep adding environments here to my list. I don't really know how to remove them. I guess it's just right clicking, but I haven't tried yet. Uh, blur loft, airport, airport deck. Could it be? Um, oh my God, uh, just give me a Toronto downtown or Toronto evening. That's, that's perfect. Toronto evening, that's, that, that should be okay. So actually, let me check. Uh, can we delete materials uh, or not materials? These these guys. Uh, right click on it. Cool. There's no delete button. Um, all right. But what if I type in environments? Can I delete them here? Delete. Yes. There is a there is a button where I can delete it. Okay, great. So you can delete it here, you can delete it there. That's fine, that's that's reasonable. So here we have our, um, what you call it, the, the, the shadow. Let's see if we can actually um, control the, the intensity of the shadow, right? Because there, there needs to be some atmospheric light, right? Right? <laughs> there should be. I don't know, there, there must be. So let's see. For that, I need to turn on the skylight. So I'll type in lights. Skylight. Yeah, great. That works. Can I access anything about the skylight? Properties? Skylight properties? Anything? Hello? Properties? No. So I don't have any access. Like, I can't change anything about the skylight, but at least I can turn it on or off. I assume the skylight is being calculated according to the light in this uh, environment. Speaking of which, uh, I don't want to see it. I just want it to be reflected here. So I will use custom environment for reflections. And here I will just use a solid color. Or maybe, do we use the environment? Sure, just to show how shitty it is. Uh, but I will still use a, though, sorry, I will not use a custom environment. So this is what we, what we have so far. <laughs> oh my God, that's so bad. Okay. Um, is there anything about lighting? Uh huh. Oh, I can use a custom environment for skylighting, but it's hidden here. So here I can use, um, for instance, St. John's, or I can even use Rhino Sky for environmental skylighting. Ah, I don't know. Let me select all of these and add that. Remember that material that I've created and you were waiting for me to add it and I never did? Let's do that. Uh, materials, rock, this bad boy here, assign to objects. That's how it looks like here. Ah, uh, the tiling could be, oh my god, the tiling could be better, but um, we, we don't care about the tiling right now. What we care about is how it's actually going to render out. So ray traced, let's see. Wait for it. Wait, no, it's not rendering, is it? No, it's not rendering, thank god. Okay, so it, it is not rendering but it doesn't seem to be starting as well. So that's not good. <laughs> that, that's, that's not good at all. Um, this is my biggest, and I will kind of end, end it at this note, end the video at this note. This is my biggest concern or, or my biggest uh, issue with uh, Cycles Render for Rhino 7. It's the speed. The speed at which you do things and the unresponsive user interface. So here I have a single object with a single material and a single light. And that object has a displacement map on it. And that displacement map completely disables me from being able to render this object. If I were to pause this, 
and go to materials go to rock this is even like black it's not even showing showing up here go to rock and turn off the displacement right turn off the displacement by the way it's it's super laggy uh, i don't know if you can tell and then i press the, that small render button which you can't see because my webcam is in the way so let me just boop, 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 move my webcam here this uh, button right here the play button then it should be able to render or not or not do i recommend using rhino 7 cycles render absolutely not they have improved it drastically compared to rhino 6 but still uh, free competitive uh, renderers which use the same engine blender i always kind of specify blender as, as as an alternative so blender is a better much stronger and much more stable version of the render that we are seeing here again i might be wrong with this i haven't had a lot of experience i, I don't have a lot of experience working with cycles render uh tldr I, I spent like all in all i would say around 20 hours maybe in the last three years working with cycles um so i'm not not a professional if you are or if you have some insights that I might have missed or something that you disagree with, just let me know in the comments and I will, just as I mentioned, when I mentioned that I was right, I will make sure to mention when I was actually wrong. Okay, so I will end it on that note. And actually, let's look at the prettier picture here. This is not gonna start rendering, this is just horrible, Jesus. Let's call it a day. Bye.